Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's Xbox Factor Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Mr. Boomstick XL, and as you can hear, there is a tremendous amount of excitement in my voice because not only do I have one co-host, I have two co-hosts for today's amazing Xbox stuffed show. First up, you know him as Mr. Destiny, but you also know him from his YouTube channel and his time on the Basement Radio Arcade Podcast. Please welcome Gaming Forte. Yo, Zoom. Yeah, man. Amazing. Can't wait to um, chop it up with you with these topics and been looking forward to this one, especially since all the news that came out yesterday from Xbox. Yeah, finally, we have something really exciting to talk about. But not to be ignored, we have our second co-host on today's episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast. And you know him from being very social on social media, on Twitter. Please welcome Mojo Blues. Hey Boone, thanks for having me. Oh, well, listen, dude, it's great to have you. You asked, you heard me on BRAP that I was looking for some co-hosts. Um, and I have some really, really cool, before we get into the Xbox news, I have some exciting information. People have been hitting me up in the DM for quite some time, and I just wanted to announce that the original co-host that created this show with me, you know him as the London Gamer, no, I'm just kidding, the Welsh Gamer will be returning to his seat next week, which is August 15th. I'm very, very stoked. Uh, You know, he took some time off to handle some some personal family business. Thankfully, I'm very happy to report that everything turned out well for both him and his family, and he will be reprising his role as the standard co-host for this particular Xbox program, and we will be going back to Thursdays at noon at our regular scheduled programming time. But let's get into the big news of what broke yesterday, and of course... I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, people. I have to figure out if co- if selling myself on the corner or collecting cans will help me pay for it. The Xbox One X Special Edition Custom Console for Gears 5 was announced. And yes, finally, it seems as if they are hearing and listening to the cries of the fans that have been asking for these types of bundles and consoles. And if you didn't know... I just put up a video giving you my impression of both the Xbox One S version and the Xbox One X, which is the way I would go. But Gaming Forte, I want to go to you first because you work for GameStop and you obviously have seen the traffic move towards the PlayStation, especially in the amazing custom bundles they've had. I mean, you look uh, how well Spider-Man sold it sold like hotcakes. You look how well the the God of War version of the custom console sold. And now the Xbox is finally, 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 finally returning to greatness with what I think is one of the best custom consoles to date. What are your thoughts on what they showed? Oh, man. So I was... First of all, I was shocked because it was something that came completely out of left field. I didn't expect a custom console this late into the development of when the game was releasing. Normally, systems like this, they talk about week not not just weeks, but months in advance of them coming out. So they give people a chance to um, pre-order and you know gauge the success of how many people actually want the system. But I'm not about to harp on that because ultimately, I'm just happy they did it because this is something that's been really a hallmark for microsoft going back to the 360 days when we had literally custom consoles of even of all the third party games that they had um that they had marketing deals for and it was like the norm for that generation and throughout this generation with the exception of the titanfall system and the halo um the halo 5 system we really haven't had custom we well actually those were the really the only custom systems we had for xbox um, especially if you don't count those just color waves that they have for certain ones that had um, 
variations of games for them. So seeing this being one of the more elaborate ones, they did the same thing with the Gears of War uh, 4 one. Yes. It was pretty much styled the same exact way. That one was an Xbox One S. It came with two terabytes of space. Um, it had the cracks. It had like the engravings of the um, the cr- the carved of scratches into the casing for it. It was an amazing looking system. The, the controller was stylized in the same manner. And not only did they have that, they also had the elite controller that released around that same time that kind of didn't go exactly with the system but it was mimicking of the system with the cracks in the armor and everything so seeing this was like pretty much a breath of fresh air just knowing that microsoft is starting to finally i mean i'm not going to say they're finally getting it but they're actually doing something that everybody wants them to do and and sony has been very very successful with bringing out custom variations of their system over the last two to three years and that's the main reason why they got to a hundred million custom souls because most of these people are buying two, three, four, yep. if not five versions of the system. And I'm not saying it's for everybody, but you know, I know Boone, I know you're super excited about it. And we all and you know that there's gonna be a new Xbox coming out next year. But guess what? That's not gonna stop you from not getting this system because <laughs> you're an Xbox fan and you wanna have the latest and greatest, especially when it comes to a game that you actually adore when it comes to Gears of War. So I think this is an amazing move by Microsoft. Um I'm kinda on a fence. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, I did pre order it because I was like, I'm not gonna be the person that's gonna be left in the code just in case I do decide. <laughs> (laughs) want it but it's easy for me to say hey if i don't get this system at least i had it on pre-order and somebody some lucky guest that's going to walk in my store one day if i decide not to get it will have a chance to get it because it will be an extra one in my store but uh there's a really good chance i am going to pick this system up i'm just like pretty much everybody else where am i going to find 450 extra dollars to pay for this thing because it was like an expense that i wasn't expecting to have but I'm man, I'm I'm excited. Just the I love the color scheme. I love the white with the blue and just the shades they're doing with it. And the matching controller just kind of set it off for me. So it's an amazing looking system. I'm I'm hoping that this isn't a one trick pony. And I'm really looking forward to what they do with Halo because that's the flagship. And if I can get a Scarlet rendition of a Halo system then they batting a thousand for me so I'm super excited and i'm looking forward to the future of what they do with these custom consoles if they continue to keep doing them which i hope they do you know what what i'm hoping for with this uh first first of all i have to applaud microsoft uh for the fact that they're offering this in two flavors you're getting mm-hmm. the xbox one s which is the cheaper more affordable console and of course the xbox one x which is the one i would go with simply because you are future proofing yourself because obviously the xbox one x is the most powerful console now we do have project scarlet coming out and maybe next year you know holiday next year you won't be in a financial position to get a scarlet right away so you could logistically use your x and still have you know ray tracing and 4k and running at 60 mm-hmm. frames per second so that's why if you are new to the xbox family you might want to go with the what, what many consider and it's been confirmed you know that the industry considers the most powerful console that's currently available uh, now mojo i want to get your opinion on this because this A lot of people, including myself, honestly thought that this was going to be announced at Gamescom, which is on the 20th of August. Uh, We are a few weeks away. We just got word that Microsoft will be making a a, a presentation or an announcement there at Gamescom, which is very exciting. And now that this has been moved off the table, we know it's going to be something new, which has me very stoked. But yesterday, what were your opinions on how the Internet... Uh, caught fire when this when when they unveiled this amazing looking custom console it was pretty amazing and i was at work and yeah twitter blew up it was a lot of people right off the bat trying to say some negative things but uh, i'm getting Mm -hmm. really good timing with uh, this this late in the generation and cells are starting to go down a bit Uh, this is a great shot in the arm and they've Microsoft has talked about this before. You can't just do this really quick. For a while, why they haven't let people know that? 
I don't know. It, it takes a lot of planning to get these custom consoles and everything out on time. And it's not just a console. Headphones, keyboard and mouse. Yep. Uh, even even a hard disk drive, which looks pretty sweet. And they said GameStop was going to have an exclusive uh, top five terabyte version of it. So Wow. As far as social media, oh, that was a... Well, I mean, like, what what now. are your what are your opinions on it, though? I mean, how how are your feelings about what uh, about the design of the console? I thought it was beautiful. It was amazing, and the the laser etching, uh, yeah, they go that extra step. They they've had so few this generation, and and I guess they've got their reasons. They've had some in the past where it got some were ended up left on shelves, and uh, I think maybe some. Uh, Retailers made them eat those, and I think that's why they shot away from them. But uh, except for Gears and Halo, you know, they're bigger, bigger franchises. But this thing was beautiful, and they, you could tell their design team was in on it. And they ain't no sticker, so. Well, you know what? That's a great point. Uh, you know, and here's the thing. You know, I know that I've heard and we've seen it. You know, uh, you know, occasionally when uh, Sony would do a, a custom console, it would normally just be a sticker. Like the Spider-Man one was painted. Uh, the God of War one had the you know the painted design, which I currently own the PlayStation 4 God of War version. Um, and uh, you know, but I'm gonna say this: um, custom consoles do a lot of things for the platform and the brand. Um, and, um, you know, obviously many hardcore players like Forte was alluding to earlier, like myself, like him are going to run out and want to buy this because we're such Gears of War fans. Now, the, for me, the design is pretty, pretty in my, again, in my opinion is epic, uh, because if you look at it, it does, I don't know how they did it. The, I mean, the paint job on this is bananas because the skull looks like it's embedded underneath yep. ice. It, it's just, it looks like a hologram. It looks like it's, a hologram. It absolutely yeah. does. I mean, it is bananas what they were able to do in this. Uh, Forte, wh why don't you continue on this, uh, you know, excitement rant? No, I mean, no, you're absolutely right. And that's the and the one thing, and I can kind of agree with what Mojo was saying about how Microsoft probably shied away from making them because a lot of them, some some of this stuff set on shelves. But ultimately, it really came down to the reason they set on shelves is because they weren't as elaborate as this system was. That Gears of War, both Gears of War systems to date, those were super elaborate. Even when it came to the, I mean, as much as I want to say the Titanfall system was a custom console, it was, but it wasn't as la elaborate as the Gears of War system. Even the Halo system wasn't even this elaborate. Right. They went to extreme um, stakes to actually make this system look as good as it did. And when I'm looking at custom systems, I'm looking at it as a regard of like shapes and carves into and things like that. Think about like the Star Wars, the R2D2 360. That was a custom console. Yes. You could literally when you looked at it, it looked like a 360, but guess what? It had different things on it that normal 360s didn't have on it. It wasn't just a regular paint job. It actually looked like it it looked, it looked like something that you would take to West Coast Customs and have them do like a car <laughs> or something. That's what it that's what it looked like. Yeah. And and if Microsoft is going to make a system that's not in line of a custom costume like that, then more people aren't going to buy it. But when you give people something like this, it, it's, it literally screams the it screams the attitude of what Gears of War is, then it's going to sell and people are going to be excited to get it. And that's why I'm hopeful for the next version of whatever they do with the next rendition of the system, even if it's an X, even if they even if they did an Xbox One X version of the Halo Infinite system and they did a Scarlet system, that would be a win-win because then you're serving two masters at that point. Yeah, and great I, point. And I and I just think that that is the win-win that comes from it. But as long as they make systems that look cons look custom and not just a paint job, because that's what some of their system have been. 
then people will always be excited to get newer and better things. And that might be a part of the pitfall why Xbox to this day, well, we don't know exact numbers, but, you know, it's being rumored 40 million systems. Think about how many they would have sent if they would have been consistent with their custom console game throughout the whole generation. Maybe another 10 million would have sold just because the hardcore wanted to go out and buy them. Yeah. So, that's that's a, that's food for thought right there. But uh, other than that, I think everybody is just as excited as you are when it comes to looking at that system. You know, I'm going to say this, uh, Mojo. I want to get your final opinion on this. But before I do, um, you know the, you know, th- there's something to be said about enticing and playing to your hardcore. Right now, I, Sony gets it. Sony understands that it's their hardcore. That will sell to the casual gamer. Mm. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. That that's that's fact, folks. You know, I've been in this business a very, very, very long time. And while I was w- in uniform years and years ago, I would talk about video games and I would talk about the latest console. And I'd have guys who had kids who didn't weren't in the know. And they're like, wait, wait a second, but, you know, what are you talking about? Oh yeah, this game just came out for this console. Oh, where, well, where can I get it? Oh, you can go here and pick it up. Do you know how many co- consoles for, uh, for for the Nintendo uh, the platform, the S- Sony platform, and the Xbox platform I personally sold? Like, if I if I had a dollar for each one, I would be able to for, for, be able to pay off my uh, the new custom console that just released because I sold that many. But it's 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 important to give your fan base options, and mm-hmm. Gears Five is a big game. In fact, like I said in my video, it is the biggest first party game to release since Forza Horizon 4. And that released in October 2nd of 2018. So it's been a while. Uh, yes. So to celebrate the Gears franchise in a proper manner, I think that this is the right thing to do. Mojo, would you agree with that opinion? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll let you in on something booming. 40 plus years of gaming i have never owned i usually buy right off the bat and so by the time they start dropping custom consoles i've, I've always been like eh, that's cool but I, i've got i don't need a console but I, i'm getting this one it just it was <laughs> that's great and i was just telling my son and i was thinking about buying a uh, an s model and i wanted to get that straight painted green one that they had for a uh, battlefield the battlefield one one uh, and and only because i'm i'm ex-military and and i just wanted to like a backup to my backup uh 4k uhd i'm like wow no i guess i'm gonna spend twice the money and then get this this new x because that thing is just yeah, it's it, it, it's really sweet. There, there's no doubt about it, and it's certainly going to. I think it's going to move consoles personally, and I'm actually looking forward to um, having uh, Forte back on the show to talk about that because obviously he's going to know firsthand how many sold if they're flying off the shelves. I, I think Microsoft understands that, uh, and, you know. And I kind of want to segue, guys, if you don't mind, into the next topic. Um, yep. And um, you know, here's the thing. You know, I talked about the Ninja signing on breakfast at boom last week but i didn't get a chance to really dive into the ramifications of this signing and you know th- th- this there's something to be said about the extremely poor messaging and marketing uh that caused microsoft to lose this generation and again i i, I say this as a fan you know, because I want Xbox to succeed. And I'm sure that everybody that's listening who's an Xbox fan wants them to succeed, as well as, of course, my esteemed panel members. Uh, we want to see Xbox do better. We don't want to see uh, Xbox get shit on, pardon my French, every at, at, at every opportunity on social media. And, you know, this, this signing... Uh, is is gonna like I said it, it, it to me anyway it's a megaton announcement for a lot of reasons you know first of all uh, people have to go back and you know we you know when you talk about the Xbox brand we're not going back to 2013 we're gonna bring it back to 2017 late 2017 when Phil Spencer got promoted you have to understand the hot piling a hot pile of shit he was handled uh, handed that he had to fix. 
You know, you had hardware issues, you had software issues, you had service issues, you had an, uh, a, a, an opinion from the, uh, you know, the, the general media, the gaming media, that they didn't like the Xbox brand. There was, th- this is what I would call ice skating uphill. That's, that's, would be, mm-hmm. that, that's what he was hand, handed back then. And why this signing is more important than people are giving credit for, because I'm going to tell you this. The one thing, if, if, you, if you're trying to get facts, don't go to social media. Go to your friends. Go to places that you trust, you know, uh, content creators you trust. And you're, going to get the, you're going to get the straight skinny on it. Um, I heard so many opinions. Some of them were outrageous. Some from content creators, which, of course, I will never name, that considered this a bad signing. Oh, they're wasting money on a on signing Ninja and not making games. That is a ridiculous assumption to make. And if you were one of these folks that were making it, you live in a very small bundle, a, a bubble per se, because they they have eleven new studios since twenty seven, uh, you know, since twenty eighteen, folks. That's a big deal. We have to give them a chance to get these games out. They will come, and when they're here, people will forget that they were at one point only had four first party studios. Um, you know, I, I but I, I want to go to, but again. I'll give my opinion towards the end because I have a lot to say. But I, you know, obviously have two panel members that I want to hear from, and of course, I want to go to Forte first. Forte, here's the thing, Ninja. Okay, if people didn't understand this, already has a million subscribers in under a week. A mm-hmm. million subscribers, and it's probably going to triple that in the next seven days. This kid brings the, uh, brings the business wherever he goes. He left Twitch, which made him a millionaire, and now he's even a bigger millionaire because the rumor is six years, $96 million to sign with Xbox. Now, I know that we've heard different uh, stipulations in the contract that he doesn't have to play Xbox games. But rest assured, when Gears 5 comes out, He's going to be playing it. He's going to be playing it the single player. He's going to be playing the multiplayer. He's going to be playing with other people in the escape mode. How important is it to the brand, but also a game like Gears 5, to have this guy attached to it? All right. So first, let's let's talk about that one million people that um, hit that subscribe button. We can't even get in some YouTube circles. We can't even get... 10 people to hit a like button and it's free (laughs) now people are going to sit here and say well those were free subs they were giving free subs away so yeah a million people that's not really impressive i'm sorry that is huge there wasn't even a million people more than likely on mixer combined yep he he brung so much attention just to mixer itself that people literally hit a button that's free and Google and us as YouTubers can't even get people to hit the like button <laughs> 10 times, 15, 20 times. We beg for 100 likes on a YouTube video, and that's free, and you don't even get notifications for doing that. So the fact that this man did that in less than a week lets you know how big of a sighting this was. I was firmly in place of saying this is a great I, great thing for Microsoft because um, I talked about this on our on the brap on the test show of brap that we did that turned into you mean a you mean show. the three hour show that we <laughs> the, did the three yeah the three hour <laughs> show that we did and, but I talked about it on there and um, some of the panel members were kind of like they could have put it towards games and and yes they could have but like I will always tell people Microsoft is doing the things that I want them to do nice. And they are doing what is good for them. They're not trying to be something different. They're not trying to be this encumbrance of all things. They they come to the realization that, yes, hardware is important. Games are important. But services is the number one thing that Microsoft is really, really good at. That's why they're the biggest in PC. That's why Xbox Live is one of the best. If No, it's not even the best. It is by far the most ultimate way of playing games with your friends online. Yep. And that's with PC being a free service. Xbox Live is built for you to want to play your games with your friends. And that's why people gravitate to that system. And then 
they're bringing you Game Pass, which is the best gaming service that you can possibly own. If you don't have, dude, it's getting to a point where you want to have, if, if you don't have, you have an Xbox, you have to have Game Pass. It's like, why would you just turn down such a great chance to just basically have a library of games right now? It's only $1 a month, but I mean, even at the $15 a month when it finally goes up. So that's what I'm impressed with. The fact that they're finally talking to their own, they're, they're doing what they want to do and it's working for their company. And this Ninja thing only enhances that, you know, him being the face of mixer is going to in turn be the face of xbox thank you and then it's going to also be the term of the face of some of the best games that he loves to play yes they said he doesn't have to play xbox games but the first thing he said when he um was in lalalapalooza and he talked about his um gaming history how he was a huge halo fan and i remember those he's not just spinning uh he's just not you know just selling wolf tickets on that he was in the mlg circuit all those years ago when halo was a really really big thing and he was on mlg streaming talking playing and competing in halo like it was no one's business and to have him be the face of that um movement going forward is going to be huge and microsoft i don't care how much money they spent yes that money could have went towards games but guess what gears of war we don't know how much that game cost them to make if it cost them 250 million dollars to make gears of war 225 of us going towards marketing now yeah. you have now you have an individual that you could have paid anywhere from fifty to ninety two million for six years that's going to do nothing but be the spokesperson for one of your biggest services, going to play one of your biggest games of all time, and you paid him the fraction of the price it's going to cost you to market your own games going forward over the next few years. I think this is a tremendous move and not only is it going to help him it's going to also help mixer grow because guess what when the more people guess what those people weren't on mixer before now yeah. all the other content creators that are on mixer when he doesn't stream they're going to be like hey this mixer is pretty cool getting these different um these sparks and stuff and collecting them are cool i want to go see what other streamers are doing on mixer and guess what it grows the pot microsoft makes more money and yeah. guess what when microsoft makes more money that means they could put more money into games and that money that people say they're not seeing that ninja got for joining microsoft you're going to see that on the back end when microsoft starts putting more money into games that he helped them promote by him just streaming playing and being on their platform yeah that that's a that's a really really great point because let, 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 let's face let's face reality you know when we do these shows at least when i do these shows and everyone that's worked with me in the past knows that the show notes that i do are meticulous because i want to make sure a i have facts B, I don't sound like a boob. And C, <laughs> I want to make sure that I put on a good show for the nearly 85 people that are watching. And hopefully, obviously, that chat will grow before shows end and we'll get 100 people in here. Um, and it's important to me as a content creator. My professionalism level that I hold myself to is, is taller than I am because I have a responsibility to when I put these shows out. And Microsoft has a responsibility to their fan base. Now, yes, for several years, people can attest to they felt abandoned. They felt, uh, you know, they felt like the direction Microsoft was going wasn't for them. And I cannot argue that fact because I have felt like that as well. But when you look at what they have done, see, Microsoft, what, again, what, what they've been doing since Phil Spencer took the position in late 2017 it doesn't seem like they're all big moves because Microsoft doesn't work that way. They don't look for these big splash moves. They, they, they start putting, they dump the puzzle box out and they slowly but surely start to put this picture together. You know, it starts with the hardware. Then it goes to the software getting new developers into the into the in, into the fray. Then they go into when they start working on services. Then they combine services and they make Ultimate Game Pass. And 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 now they make this big signing. You know, he's a huge streamer, and there is no doubt 
that he will be playing Microsoft's biggest first party games when he in fact does this and I'm actually going to take a page right out of Slow Mo Backslap's book because he actually said this and I want to credit him for this I don't know if he's in the chat if I did I, I, I missed him but I want to credit him for this for saying this on that, that three hour brap, uh, test cast that we did is he made a great point there is a generation that follows ninja and mm -hmm. it's not the generation that may be in this chat right now it's certainly not me and it may not be the two people that are on this panel it's the younger generation that plays fortnite now i don't i'm not I, i'm gonna say it, it's probably a, a, an age range anywhere between 9 and 17 let's just say maybe even mm -hmm. going to maybe 20 so we say not between 9 and 20 uh you know years old both male and female this generation, okay, which is a huge chunk of the casual market, may not even know what the hell a Halo is. They may not mm -hmm. know what a Gears of War is, but they know what a Ninja is. So here's my question to you, Mojo. Because of the draw, be, and, and we're talking an age range of possibly 11 years of, of a span from 9 to 20. This guy, with his face being attached to not just Mixer, that's important for Mixer, the Mixer brand. What's important is this guy could potentially bring in new Xbox players who only know about the PlayStation 4 because it's the cool system. It's the hip system. It's the casual system. And if they see Ninja playing Halo Infinite and Gears 5, they will, again, it's possible. I'm not, I'm not putting this, the sword in the stone here. I'm saying there is a potential to get new customers into the Xbox platform that were not there before. And when they're there, they're going to learn about Xbox Game Pass and their parents, if they're younger, will know that all they have to pay is $10 or $15 per month to get over 100 games. All of the games in, uh, that, that, uh, that, in fact, Ninja will be paying, uh, playing and they don't have to go out and buy these $60 titles. How important do you think this signing is? It's huge. It's going to drive traffic to Mixer. And that age range, it may be even a little bigger than you think, Boom. Uh, many, for a little context, many years ago, both my sons started just watching uh, game streaming, and it got to freak me out. It's taken me years kind of to wrap <laughs> my head around it. Don't watch people play games. You play games. What, what are y'all doing? I said, we've got cable. We've got movies. We got all these various game systems, and yet there they were, and and they, that's what they do. Like you said, there's there's a certain amount of people that that just don't know about Xbox. Sure, they're gonna see all these channels, and I can tell you one thing: even though his agreement that he can stream, you know, whatever game he wants. He's not going to be streaming Death Stranding. I'm just telling you. I don't think you're going to see him, you know, be doing PlayStation games. That's it. Might might be something that's unspoken in his contract. But uh, you paying somebody ninety six million dollars, or how many ever million it is, might be doing a lot of third party games that Microsoft makes money on. They get that thirty percent cut. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to be doing the other stuff, and I think. Uh, I'm hoping right off the bat he he starts streaming some some gears when it drops. Uh, it's going to be real interesting. And yeah, it, it, I, when it, they it, announced it, I knew I understood this was a big deal when, when I heard they announced it because I I get it, but I didn't realize in a week a million people, million subs, dude. Yes, in one week, not even a week. I think it's like yeah. it's five or it's six days. Even a week, five or six days. Yeah, yeah. and. And Mixer, while I, myself, I don't watch it very often, but I've been to it. I've watched things on it. You know, I've. It's a pretty good service, and it's only going to get better. They're go, they're going to grow it. And I think they 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 were it was on a bubble maybe, and you know they was talk about where they laid some people off. 
was more staff kind of stuff. I don't know that they ever had plans like they thought they were going to get rid of it. Push like this. I just love it when they when, when they go for something, they go for it. And be a, a difference maker. Yeah, they treat it like a sports team at this point. That's what that that's what that signing felt like to me. I agree. It felt like it felt like, <laughs> it felt like a, a a mass exodus from um, somebody leaving Twitch that was super uh, popular, and um, they it's like it's like the old saying, you know, weaken your weaken your foe to make yourself stronger, and then when you do that, you become even stronger than they are. And this is going to be something that's going to happen more and more. I think even as time goes on, I don't think Ninja is the first to do this. It's going to be other people that's going to do this. Maybe it'll be a little bit slower of a trickle effect because people want to see exactly how this plays out with Ninja, like how his numbers are going to look after the free sub thing goes away, but. It's still the fact that as of right now, since he taken he took the chance to do this, he is undoubtedly going to be the face of Microsoft yes. when it comes to the younger generation. Oh, for sure. And who, and who knows? Maybe one day we all talk about Major Nelson and him taking a step to the side and stuff. Who knows? Ninja could become that one person that becomes the spoke person and the person that does all the marketing and does all the shows and stuff for um for um xbox in general instead on top of being a streamer because this might be a longer play for ninja ninja might have other things in his contract that we don't even know about so right. mm -hmm. this is just the beginning and trust me the man made the the man made a business decision for himself and i always tell people you make a decision for yourself because you're a business in yourself this channel that boom is running is a business that he's putting together and he's going to look out for the business and its interests ninja did the same thing just because he left twitch doesn't mean he sold out he just made a business decision because microsoft gave him an offer that he could refuse but he would be idiotic to refuse yeah. and i'm super i'm proud that he made that decision not because it's xbox just because in general he opened the door for other streamers to do the same exact thing and that is diversify the platform because twitch is a giant and the only way you're going to make moves like this is like how Epic does with PC. Buy out exclusives, just like Microsoft just bought Ninja away from Twitch. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes it. Listen, again, the, someone mentioned it. I'm not sure. I, th I think it was you, Forte, that mentioned it. But it might it might, it might have even been Mojo. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but before I give my point, and I don't want to forget, Nightwolf. 3186 with the outstanding and very generous $5 super chat. He says, much love, Boom. This was such a bad move. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, if this was such a bad move, why does Dr. Disrespect want the same deal or better? Keep it up, bud. Loving the panel. Yes, thanks so much for being here. And that's I want to just touch on that for a second because that is a great point, Nightwolf. You know, when you have one big streamer come over and get a, you know, a, 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 a megaton deal like he got... Twitch still has some big name people, but who's to say that they may not want to come over to get a taste of what Microsoft is is making? And it, it could. And listen, let me again. I'm gonna. I, I just want to reiterate on something that a lot of people did not put. You know, when you put one and one together, for me, it makes two. For 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 the you know for social media, it makes seventeen. I don't know why, but a lot of people forget. And you said it that he has. So, some major halo ties to the brand and if you think for a second that this dude isn't going to bring in millions and millions of new players to when halo infinite launches you are a fool because this guy is going to bring millions and millions of players in any first party game that he sells but more specifically the rebirth or the recoming or the second coming or the tenth coming if you want of the halo franchise in halo infinite next fall when it launches with the xbox scarlet so it is a big deal and this is you know one thing that a lot of people including myself have said in the past sometimes microsoft is a little late to the party you know, they kind of miss the bus on certain things. And no, sometimes when they do things, they're trying to be the cool kid that really isn't. And they miss. Well, this, the last two announcements, meaning the Ninja one last week, 
That's a cool kid move. That is a big freaking deal. And then they follow that huge news with, of course, what we just talked about on the opening of the show, the Gears of Five, Gears, Gears, Gears 5 custom console that comes in both the S and X flavors. That is a big deal. And we have... we. We have Gamescom coming, and it has been confirmed that we're going to get something new announced there. There's a lot to be excited about in the Xbox brand. Now, I understand there are tons of naysayers that will continue just down this this road of, of hating on Xbox. You know what, folks? Don't try to change their opinion. That's not your job. If you like Xbox, if you love Xbox, and that's where you like to play, play into your heart's content. Do not do not pay attention to the haters that can't see past their own nose. I, I, I want to say that. But, you know... And obviously, you know, I want to move on to the next topic. Now, it's gaming related, but with a twist. And this is another segue into a, a topic I thought that some people would be interested in. And I kind of want to talk about it because no one on other shows are really mentioning it. And that's why you tune in to the uh, Double Barrel Gaming channel because you get stuff that is interesting, but at the same time, you know, not regurgitated. And I want to talk about. A story that I pulled from Dual Shockers concerning the Halo TV series at Showtime and some interesting news that they just cast Cortana and a ton of new characters. Now, this is set to air in 2021, which I believe it's supposed to start filming next year. And I'm going to say this, and I think this is not going to come off as a surprise, folks. When it comes to TV and film uh, projects based on video games... It's usually not good. I mean, I mean, I don't even want to go back and talk about Super Mario Brothers. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to talk <laughs> about Doom. I don't want to talk about some of the other horrendous, uh, you know, Hitman. Uh, two, two, two movies of Hitman, for that matter. And, you know, you, you always kind of hold your heart. Because as a gamer, it's easy for us to just walk over to your console, put in Gears 5, put in Halo Infinite, put in whatever you want to put in, and you're, it's, it's going to be a game that you're going to enjoy. But when it comes to TV and film, we always seem to be on the outset of failure. And uh, I am going to say this, you know, Showtime has confirmed that each episode of the Halo series, whatever it's called, whatever the, the official title winds up being, is... As expensive as one of the episodes for Games of Thrones, uh, Games of Thrones, and and they really spent some serious bucks. HBO really spent a lot of money on that, you know. And um, you know what I what I like about the story is they announced the official casting uh, of some of the uh, of some of the uh, of some of the you know, the key players. And uh, one of them was Dr. Catherine Hazley. Uh, and, of course, obviously, she's going to be playing uh, Cortana as well. So it's a double role. And it's uh, the, the actress's name. Uh, she starred in Calification and The, and the First. It's, uh, I believe, it's Natasha uh, Meckenhorn. Or Mechelhorn, uh, M E C E L H O N E. Uh, so I, I probably butchered the name. I don't know who the actress is personally because I didn't watch either of those shows. But they also announced that um, uh, Bookeem Woodbine from Fargo will be joining the cast as Soren 066, who is a privateer. Um, uh, that that fringes on the human civilizations and other casting members that were announced include Shabana um, uh, Azimi, um, Bentley Kalu, Natasha Kolzak, and Kate Kennedy. Uh, and uh, what, again, a lot of these names I'm not familiar with, which actually the names. So if I saw the faces, I'd probably be like, oh yeah, I remember them. But, you know, I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because, obviously, it's a smaller topic, but it's still Halo-related, and I wanted to talk about it. You know, this this is going to be a big show for Halo because if, if you look at the way things are starting to shape up, Halo Infinite is launching in 2020 
with the new consoles. The first time since 2001 with Halo Combat Evolved. And that's a really, 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 really big deal for the Xbox platform because they're using the new engine. And I, I, I think I'm going to mess it up. I always do. I think it's the slip space engine, if I'm not mistaken. A am I correct in correct. saying that? You All right, because I always get it wrong. It's terrible. As your show host, I should be ashamed of myself. Uh, but the new engine is going to have physics and graphics that Halo fans have been asking for for years. And I honestly cannot wait to dive in next year. But on the, uh, you know, on the heels of a new Halo game that is supposedly going to be the second coming of the franchise, we are having a big budget triple A or quadruple A, if you want to consider that, uh, you know, TV series by Showtime, and we know they put out some really good stuff. Forte, I want to get your opinion on this. You know, this was originally a 10, uh, 10 episode uh, season one uh, planning, which is that's what it's going to be for season one. How excited are you to see what Showtime can bring to the Halo franchise in 2021? Uh, so, man. It seems like we've been talking about a Halo show in some type of iteration ever since Halo became this monstrous thing back in 2000. Actually, back way back in 2001, but really got its footing with Halo 3 in 2007. And um, I've been they've been talking about making a TV show. They they did little web episodes of it that did really well. I know Steven Spielberg was working on something at one point that I don't know if it's still going on or not, but. I am um, as much as I want to be super cautious about this, I can't help but be excited because Halo is Halo is literally my favorite franchise of all time when it comes to just the games in general, because it's more than just the games for me. It's about the lore, the worlds. It's a universe that you can just dive into and get completely lost in. And it doesn't even have to be about Master Chief. It could be about any other thing that Halo or just the Halo universe has to offer. And uh, knowing that this is something that is finally looking like it's coming to fruition, I'm super excited for. It's going to be on Showtime, which is paid television. So I think um, there, the fact that it's going to be on paid television lets you know that everybody's not going to be able to watch this, meaning they have a lot of faith in it because normally something like this, they will want to get as many eyes on it as possible. And um, having that exclusive exclusivity to Showtime lets me know that they have a lot of faith in the direction or the script that's being written for this show. So me, in general, I'm just super excited to see what they do with it. Um, I hope it's not just tied to just the Master Chief timeline. I mean, I want it to be mostly about Master Chief, but I want the whole Halo universe to kind of be brought forth in this about you know the analogies of the halo rings and how everything is um done you know i feel like this can be something that overall could be like the video games version of what the avengers can be by the time that this is all said and done because it has such a rich universe and world and things that we can do i read every last one of the books all the oh, novels nice and stuff. dude that's good nice I, name drop the the novels man like fall of reach was my favorite was by far my favorite one and it just happens to be the first one and it opened my eyes up to what the universe could be and what the cinematic universe version of the game could be if they were to do it the correct way and that's the number one thing the correct way if they do it right it will be amazing and i am looking forward to it it's just far enough out for me to like be somewhat super excited for but still say hey take your time make this right because i don't want to i don't want halo to be run through the dirt as much no more than it's already been when it comes to people saying that <laughs> halo's irrelevant and stuff because that's what we always hear well halo's a dead game why does people keep talking about this game well okay well they're fixing part of that by taking their time and bringing it to a new engine when it comes to the new game now they're looking at a situation where they're trying to expand the universe by more than just being a game and that's what i always wanted for halo what is the story of master chief on screen and um yeah. this is the first step to that you know i don't need a movie i just need a 10-part episode like they're doing now and if it does well it could turn into a series and that series can turn into a great thing and who knows it could be the next version of game of thrones if not 
better depending on how you felt about the last season. So I'm super excited for what they're doing with that. And uh, I'm just like you, man. I, I can't wait. And I think a lot of other people can't wait to see what they do on um, Showtime with it. Yeah, I, I'm I'm super stoked, and uh, you know it. There, there, there's again, it, there's a lot going on for the Xbox platform, not just in the video game realm. There's so many outside things happening for the brand that have the potential to really, you know, you've heard the saying, "I gotta hit the I hit the ground running," and mm. it it appears that even though we are I don't know, 15-ish months away from the launch of the next PS5 and the Xbox Scarlet, it seems as if they're revving up to just, I mean, explode like the Flash, you know, uh, for, for next generation. And I think that's what they need to do. And they're doing it in a way where, like, like a train that starts first first starts off on the track you know the the the, the wheels are slipping but eventually it's going to get it's going to get all of that uh, th- that you know motion behind it and you're not going to be able to stop it you can own, own basically you know what i'm hoping happens is that the microsoft brand comes back in a way prior to launching the next generation and that the industry can, can only hope to contain it cuz they're not going to be able to stop it uh, especially yeah, because sure. you know we we know that Phil Spencer is sitting right alongside Satya Nadala. That's not an easy chair to sit in, and he obviously has some big plans. And if he didn't have them, he would not have been promoted. But getting back to the Halo TV series, before I go off the deep end here, Mojo, look here's the thing. From what we've heard, and again, this is this is speculation at best. There is no confirmation. We know that Halo Infinite is going to be a, a game that's going to continue to expand as the years go by, right? We know that there's a certain story for the uh, for what we're going to get in Halo Infinite, but there's going to be stories they're going to want to tell that ex- that extend past the initial release. When you look at the way that these releases are coming. 2020 gets Halo Infinite, 2021 gets the Halo TV series. Who is to say that the uh, ongoings in Halo Infinite will not translate into the live action TV show? That is very exciting because of the unknown factor. What are your opinions on that? Mark my words right now. This will be the first accepted video game to film or television that that's critically uh, 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 now the amount of viewers is it's going to be always a, a, a limited thing because it's on showtime so but it, it will still be huge it's going to be big for them uh, this thing's going to be done on a, on a classic television three arc structure these separate stories going and you'll go from one to the next to the next. It's going to be very set up just like Game of Thrones. And yeah. now whether they're going to, I don't believe they'll have anything from, from the the new game, at least not the first season. And, and it's just nine episodes now, by the way. They, they, oh, they pull back one of the episodes. And, and it was, a, it was a smart move because you don't, they don't want any filler and three stories going at once. And I, I'm the only thing, if I had to put, I don't want to say negative, but any caveat is maybe the hardest of the hardcore be the ones that not like it because there is so much lore in Halo. Yeah, yeah it's tremendous. And even with nine hours of doing something, it's very easy not to get things 100%. When you're translating to, to film and television, you can't always do things it was in a book or a comic or in this case a video game but i think they know what they're doing they'll have advisors there that'll you know that they're not going to let them them outrageous good they they know what they're doing there's top industry people that are, that are filming it it's going to have the the background the broader story of whatever campaigns going on and you're gonna have interpersonal and there'll be three separate stories that'll all converge and then either in episode eight will be that one massive battle that's just gonna be amazing 
I'm telling you, they they're spending the money on this. It's it's gonna be good, and but the game will will be, be out. New consoles dropping. It they they've got their ducks in a row right now. That's a great point. That that's a great point, I Mojo. So, I am so happy about this show because there's been now there have been good video game translations of movies. There have believe great or that that one thing that's just like made Iron Man and or the first um, Spider Man or Sam mm-hmm. Raimi Spider Man since he directed. There, there's been a you know Blade. <laughs> there's been a, and people were like, wow, comic book movies work. Going even back before those, Superman, you know, the Richard Donner one, it just that. Mm-hmm. And I believe this show will be that. People are going to go, you can have great video game movies and television. And, and it's coming. Yeah, well, I'm going to say this, because you know, again, I don't want to spend too much on this particular topic, because obviously we have to get to uh, at least another three or four topics before the show is over. I'm going to say that the, the, w- 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 on the heels of a, 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 a critically successful, and again, I'm, I'm throwing it out there, I, I have complete faith in 343, and you know what? If I'm wrong, we will revisit this conversation when Halo uh, releases next year. I don't think I'm going to be wrong. I think that it, the game is going to be amazing. I think the new engine is going to be amazing. I think the use of Master Chief is going to be in our face. It's exactly one of the things that I did not like about five halo five um and then you're gonna have a tv series that is gonna have hype behind it because people are gonna be talking about the game so this is a win win for not only 343 but the halo franchise but i want to talk about um something big happening for the xbox game pass that has been brought to my attention now obviously I did a couple of videos, and I've talked about it on my show, that I'm very super stoked for Blair Witch that's set to release on August 30th. I cannot wait. I have a brand new pair of headphones, and I don't care if I have to wear the pens. I'm playing that game in the dark. I don't care. But it is really evident that Microsoft has been ultra-aggressive about making sure that Xbox Game Pass subscription service is fully stocked at all times with a wide variety of games. Sometimes, even brand new games like the previously mentioned Blair Witch. But, first, I have to talk about what was spotted by Reddit user PrismQ, who took a picture and shared it on the forum. It appears... That Devil May Cry 5 is coming to freaking Game Pass. And I'm going to tell you this right now. I own the game, so it doesn't matter to me. But I'm going to tell you this. Capcom went back to their roots and made Devil May Cry what we all know and love about the franchise. Fast, funny, and has tons and tons of action and customization Tons of moves. Some moves seem like something out of a Street Fighter game. That's how elaborate they are. And I want to talk about that for a second because, you know, Devil May Cry 5 launched just a few months ago in March. And obviously, it's critically acclaimed. They've sold a ton of of copies of it, both in the States and out. And we know that Microsoft had the marketing deal. So I'm starting to wonder if the deals that Microsoft makes with these new marketing deals, could we potentially see all of these games not only having the marketing rights for the Xbox brand, looking and playing the best on the Xbox One X, but going into Game Pass months after its initial release. Forte, I want to ask your opinion on this. If in fact this does happen, and I said, I, I said, go to go to Reddit and look at the picture because it's there, and it doesn't seem doctored to me, and it, it, by 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 any stretch of the truth, how big would it be for Game Pass to get Devil May Cry Five? Uh man, it, well, it was big when it got uh, Monster Hunter uh, World. Yep. Like, within the same calendar year you know a lot of people didn't expect something like that and that was um right on the heels of it getting its newest dlc release which i think 
um Capcom did a really, really good thing with that game because they said, well, I think the game itself run its le- run its length in people buying it, but we have a new DLC coming out so we can invigorate that that player base again by giving people that may have either traded the game in or probably just never gained the game a try. They see the new DLC and it's snowy, it's arctic, and it gives people one a chance to jump back in. Uh, it gives them a chance to play it. So... They did that with that game, and now it looks like Devil May Cry will be the next thing that full that falls into that. And I think the same thing like you. I don't think it's Doctor because, like I said, they just did it with one of their other biggest games, which is by far the most successful Monster Hunter game ever. So um, this is a really, really good move if it does happen. Um, Devil May Cry is one of those games um, that a lot of people either love or hate. And some people that just didn't want to give it a try because they probably just don't like the styling of the game and stuff like that. Um, Giving them a chance to play it inside of a subscription service that has over 350 games and being one of those those noteworthy games um, is a really, really good reason to bring it out. And like I said, the game has sold, has ran its course when it came to sales. So how what's the what's the best way to get more incremental sales on your game because anybody that has game pass don't you get 20 percent off the game yep if you decide you want to keep it so that's another reason for you to put it in game pass because now instead of the five or six people that just happen to come across it in the xbox store now you're getting millions of people seeing it because microsoft's going to do their their monthly video where they talk about the new games being added to game pass all those people are going to see it plus it's going to be plastered on the very front page of the xbox dashboard they're going to show all the new games coming to game pass and devil may cry will be the first one there and people are going to be like either man i never finished devil may cry i'm gonna get i'm gonna go back and do it or they never played it, or they're going to be like, man, this is a really, really great service, and I'm going to sign up for Game Pass just because of it. So it's going to it's gonna help in multiple different ways for both companies. And this is just a later example of Microsoft not giving you really the marketing exclusives that you really wanted, but with this subscription service, they're giving you the next best thing, which is probably better than that. They're giving you the game at a discounted rate, and everybody wants to play games at a discounted rate because <laughs> this hobby is very, very expensive because that's why we're thinking about buying $500 systems because of a game that's themed around a system. So I think this is a really, really great move. I just think overall... Uh, Microsoft just um, needs to continue to keep doing that, keep pushing the envelope with Game Pass, because the number one thing that most people are looking forward to now is when a game is announced and it's coming to Xbox, is it coming to Game Pass day one like all the rest of the games? Because they spoiled us with all their first party games coming there. Now we're getting a lot of third party games day one, and we're getting some of the biggest games that came out in the previous year within six months of it hitting the service so really really great thing and i uh really hope it does i do own the game already so it doesn't really benefit me but it benefits the people out there that just likes to try out new games and that's what gaming's all about yeah no absolutely uh you know keeping your 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 uh you know sites on new stuff is exactly what game pass is all about now mojo listen i'm gonna say this there is no doubt that Xbox Game Pass is by far the best bang for your buck in gaming to date. There, there's, there's no arguing it at all. It is the best, the, you, you get the best of the best for a price that's reasonably affordable. And with Ultimate Game Pass, if you are someone that has a PC, and I don't because I run this show off of a, a Surface Pro 4, so I don't have a gaming laptop. You get mm-hmm. you get gold. You get Xbox Live, which comes with games with gold. Which their month this week, their month this month was amazing. You get Xbox Game Pass on your Xbox One, and you get the PC version, which has different games. Obviously, because it's on the PC. But in your opinion, how amazing and an enticing for folks that do not have Xbox Game Pass to sign up if, in fact, Devil May Cry Five does join the roster. I, I 100% believe it's coming. They're doing an amazing job of getting content. And and this is going to be their their way of making money, this this next generation. And I kind of love this. They're, they've now carved out, this is how we're doing it. Saudi's got their thing. Thing. 
now Microsoft's doing and Game Pass is huge. And I've heard complaints like, well, there's going to be, Ubi's going to have a service. EA's got a service. Sony will end up expanding their service. And so, nope, this is already bigger than all those, way bigger. And it's just going to keep growing. And even if a game is on somebody else's service for a while, or subscribers, those third party they're still going to go, all right, we're going to pull the game out of our service. And now it'll go over on Game Pass. That's a great point. Move, move around because they, they now there might be some stuff exclusive on some of those other things because they're going to want to try to drive traffic to their their you know game service. But at the same time, where the money's at, <laughs> and and the biggest service is going to be Game Pass. And that's where that's where the money's at, and you're, you're gonna get game after game, and it just it's getting to the point now where with just maybe a little bit of advertising, so that the the, the non gaming public this because I still run into people at work. I try to tell them ten dollars a month or fifteen dollars a month if you want ultimate, and you get everything. And you get all the exclusives day one. And with all these studios they got, they're going to have their own Microsoft content and all these other games. You could literally buy a game and the entire next generation if you so choose. And you would you would never be without plenty to play. Uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing time to, to, to be a gamer. Yeah, and, you know, you brought up a good well, point, Mojo. Heard. I just want to I just want to elaborate on one of your points. You know, you said something that was really intelligent. Sony's doing their own thing, right? Sony's doing their own thing. Not so much in the services because I don't think it's coming. I would love it to be. I I, I say it all the time. I would love for, uh, for Sony to have a a, 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 a PS uh, you know service like Xbox Game Pass. I would I would sign up for that in a second because their first party games are amazing and I wouldn't have to buy them and that's a big deal. But they're doing their own thing. And they have solidified what their own thing is, right? They're catering right. to the hardcore. They're catering to the single-player, selfish gamers like myself that like story-driven, adult-themed games. Microsoft is doing something different, but it's their own thing, right? And they're leading that charge with the services. And on the back end of having a solid service like Xbox Game Pass, you're going to be able to play all of the first party games and we know that they just signed 11 new developers since 2018 so yes game pass right now is awesome but forte how even more awesome is it going to be once these uh developers start cranking out these triple a games well and then that's the whole part of when people are complaining about you know waiting for games and we've been waiting for games for a long time you know um we're only seeing the small end of or the short-sighted end of the development side with them bringing out these games once they start cranking these games out and we start seeing on a consistent basis where they're bringing out probably like one big game every quarter or at least one every other quarter uh and they get a nice little rhythm to it then i think people will even find even more uh, value into it and the biggest thing is i don't want people to think that just because all the games are going to Game Pass. Some people think that that's just going to water down the experience of some of the games. <laughs> I hate when making. I hear that. It's so dumb. <laughs> it, it is. It's, it's crazy. I mean, because this is the thing. Um, in order for them to compete in this world, they have to have bangers. They have to have games that are going to want to stand out from the rest. The reason Netflix does so well with their shows they they hit they miss more than they hit with those shows. But the thing is, the ones that hit are hit. the ones that make you want to stay. Yeah, like you know, you you want to stay to watch. Well, you know, when House of Cards before you know once they did his stupid stuff, you wanted to stay to see House of Cards. You want to stay to see Orange is uh, the New Black. Orange is the New Black. You want to stay and see you know um, all the other shows that's on the um, on the service that people are talking about, like Stranger Things and everything. Yeah. You know, they're making a video game based off of Stranger Things just because of the show. So. That's just the be. This is all just the beginning. And if Microsoft can continue to show the value and people saying, "Hey, this subscription server is worth it," I'm going to. 
put my hard earned money down to do it, then they're going to they're going to succeed. And the one thing that people don't think about the most is, yes, Game Pass is only a dollar. People always say Microsoft basically just giving their games away. But guess what? That's the marketing plan side of them. That's what they're really looking at. Why? What, what, we always ask, why don't they just give the system away? You don't make money on the system. You make money on the games that are in the system. So this is like the same thing, but in reverse order. They're saying we have a service. We're going to give this service away for the first couple of months. Guaranteed they're going to give it away for a dollar when Gears comes out. And guess what? When they start talking their engagement numbers, how many people are playing Gears, how many people slayed out inside a horde and killed, killed millions and millions of different locusts and stuff in the game, and how many people escaped from the escape room, they're going to be in the millions and billions of people just because they gave it away for a dollar. And when that type of marketing hits... Then people are going to be like, man, I'm a, I got to try this Gears of War game, especially it's a dollar right now. And once they get you used to just being there, when they move it to $15 a month or the $10 a month, if you don't want to have Xbox Live, you're going to still find it as a value because who doesn't want to have 350 plus games for $15 a month? And, they're, and, they, and they work on your system and some of those games are going to work on your PC. So if you So no matter where you play at, you're going to get a benefit from it. So, man, they're doing everything right when it comes to that regard. And like I said earlier, they're doubling down on what they are. They are a service-based company that just happens to masquerade as a ma as a manufacturer of hardware, and they're not getting rid of that, but this is still a good thing for them to do going forward. The games just have to be good, and if they are, we won't have any problems. You know, because you mentioned hardware... I want to segue into the next topic. This has been one hell of a segue show. In a story yes, that I pulled from GamingBolt.com, one of my favorite places to pull video game news, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadala says the company is dedicated to consoles despite diversification, and Microsoft will continue to be dedicated to the hardware platform for the foreseeable futures. Now, the reason why I brought this up is because there are tons, and I mean tons, of naysayers who think the Xbox Scarlet is the end of the rope for hardware because Microsoft is going to allow people to play their games wherever they want, whether that be on your smart TV, your smartphone, in the doctor's office, on the airplane, in the train, in the shitter, wherever you want to play your game, you will be able to do so with Project X Cloud. But I had to pull this story because of that particular reason. Many people, including some high profile content creators, who will, of course, remain unnamed have been basically saying the sky is falling and that Microsoft is looking to move away from consoles altogether. And I think that this story has a place because no one else is really talking about it, and that's why I pulled the story. Now, I'm going to say this. More so than other the other two platform holders, Microsoft has opened up their ecosystem in a significant way. Not only with the upcoming, of course, aforementioned xCloud streaming service and Game Pass, but in how openly the company now embraces PC gaming, which is a huge aspect to gaming. Now, it's not the way I game, and even if I had a rig, I wouldn't be playing on one because I've never been a PC gamer, and that's cool. I grew up with a console in front of me, and that's probably the way I'm going to end my, you know, the, the, whenever, my time on Earth. It's going to be playing on a console. But even allowing their major first-party titles to come to other storefronts besides Windows Game Store shows their commitment to the platform and where they want to be in the next generation. But why this is an important thing is because in the last 18 months, the, you know, again, we'll talk about it. The, the, the YouTube community hasn't really had anything nice to say about the Xbox brand. And of course, leading the charge has been the hardware situation, which again, we understand, and, and Forte, you said it, they don't make money on the hardware, but they're still not going to deny the millions of people who do want that hardware experience. Now, 
as we currently know, Project X Cloud is not going to be able to stream, you know, with ray tracing and all the bells and whistles you're going to get in that piece of hardware that most of us are going to be buying next year. And I think that that's at least 10 years away from happening. Now, maybe 10 years from now, the Xbox Scarlet 2 or 3, whatever, maybe that will be the last one. But the fact that Satya Nadala has come out and actually said that they have the hardware uh, gamer in mind tells me that they are looking at the wide picture, the long game. And this is what I've been saying that Phil Spencer has been playing. They're going to have software sales that are going to go across multiple uh, ways to play. And whether that's your phone, your TV, or your console, you're going to be able to play these games. They're not going to abandon 45 plus million people that bought the console. You got to understand, even though I've accepted it as an older gamer, the digital gaming mentality has not really just, it's not a broad, broad stroke. There are a lot of people, and I mention them all the time because they're, they're constantly talking about it on Twitter. Our good friend, Noof Nukem, he is a hardware dude. Why? Because he likes physical media. Another uh, darling of the community, Foxy. She is a, not only a diehard Gears fan, and I'm sure she's going to find a way to get the console, but she is a, a, not only a hardware gamer, but she is a physical disc gamer. So she, you know, there are and, and there and there are thousands upon thousands of gamers just of that type that do not want to convert to the digital overlords. And I hear you. So here's my question, and I got to have to roll it up because obviously I've been going on and on about this. <laughs> This seems like a win-win for the Xbox gaming community who have stuck around and have seen what started out with a limp and now has made its way into a, a, to, into a bit of a slow run. And I'm telling you right now, the hardware situation that everyone has been dooming and glooming about, you, got, you, you really got to look, look at the facts, folks. You, 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 if, if you're really on the fence and you believe that, I'm not here to change your opinion. I'm here to tell you that if, you, if you're interested, go to, game, uh, go, go to Gaming Bolt. Go to these different sites that I'm always talking about. Comicbook.com, GameRant.com. These are places that I trust, that I pull a lot of the stories from, that I, that again, they're, they're written in the way that I enjoy. Kind of like the way Game Informer is still written. The, ki the kind of way that EGM and Gamers Republic and Die Hard Gamer were, were written. They were written for the fans. So if that's the kind of writing you want, then I suggest going to these sites. They are constantly talking about how Microsoft has been doing interview after interview, and when it, and, it's, and it always comes up, Phil, Phil, is hardware going away? And he just chuckles, he smirks because he understands that it's a it's a fear, but it's a fear that there has no relevance. The hardware business is still here, and I got news for you. You can actually thank Sony for that because, and you can thank Nintendo for that. Because if they continue to make hardware, rest assured, Microsoft is going to still make hardware. What are your takes, gaming forte, on Satya Nadala basically putting the rubber stamp on telling people that the hardware business is not going anywhere? Yeah, I mean, I was one of those people that always knew this was the direction they were going to go in. People saying that sooner or later we're not going to have a box under our TV. I mean, well, what's sooner or later to you is sooner or later, like sooner, like two years from now, or is it going to be more like the later in like 20 years from now? I mean, you know, I just think that overall Microsoft knows they want to be the center of your living room. That's that was the number one goal of the Xbox platform. They tried to do it with PC over 20 years ago because all you had to do was hook up a cable and hook it up to your TV. Then they found out that wouldn't work, and then they found a way to do it with the Xbox. So now they have a place in your living room. They don't want to give that up. They don't. They want to be that. They want to be that one-stop shop. That's why the system was called the Xbox One. Right. One entertainment yes. device for everything. Yeah. So for them to ab ab abandon that, 
was foolhardy. Now, don't get me wrong. If Microsoft felt like it was beneficial to them to do something like that, they would. But they know that there is a lot of people out there that just want to be a gamer and they want a physical piece of media or uh, hardware to do that with. And that's why they're going to continue to make it because the numbers just don't add up. If you're going to give up just because most just because 50 percent of the world is going digital now, does it mean 50 percent or 100 percent of the world wants to go digital when it comes to the way that they play their games, too? It's not a one in one comparison. That's kind of two different separate stories right there. You know, um, it's most people that play games want to be able to have a tangible thing in their hand in order to play it just because you load up a game that's digitally on your system you still physically have to pick up something to play those games. If you're on yeah. PC, you're using a controller or a mouse. PlayStation, you're using a, a, a controller. Xbox and Switch, you're doing the same exact thing. But the media that you're using to play those games can be digital. It can be whatever you want it to be as long as you're able to play the games. And um, Sadia Nadella actually coming out and saying this, the head of Microsoft, that is basically even more proof because phil spencer's been saying this for a long time that's why he laughs and chuckles about it all the time he <laughs> and he doesn't want to go down this road where don matrick went down when he said you know the things he said about systems and people not liking the direction they're going in and how they can go in this other direction you know he wants to say hey let's stay on task we never said we're not coming out with this even a year ago they said that we're bringing out systems. Now they kind of rolled back on one of those systems when it came to the Lockhart, but they're still bringing you physical product to your house. And they're actually bringing you a, a custom console on top of that coming out next month. So this is a really, really good idea um, to keep doing this. I am a huge fan of uh, physical media and physical hardware. And I tell people this all the time. I, me personally, Microsoft hasn't given me a reason to buy the Scarlet because I have a I have a X right now. You know, I like I always said, it may change in the future because it depends on what that system brings that we don't know about yet. Because right. I am an Xbox fan through and through, but Microsoft has kind of painted me being a person that has a very capable PC and still have one of their very powerful systems into this corner where I feel like well, which one is going to be more beneficial to me? I like to do YouTube so I can upgrade my PC or I can go out and I can beast out on this brand new system. So I would rather do both because I have the means to do both, but I'm not going to do both just because Microsoft is bringing it. I want to do it because they entice me to want to be in this ecosystem more than I'm in it now. And um, that's what I think most gamers want out of Microsoft at this point, just a reason to want to be a part of the ecosystem, not just Xbox Live, but the Xbox in general. And this is one step by saying, hey, don't worry about the hardware. The hardware will always be there. You just have to decide if that's the hardware that you want to be a part of. Yeah, that, that's a that's a lot, lot of great points there. Uh, and uh, of course, I want to get your opinion on this, Mojo. Look, if the 11 new studios in the last 14 months, the new Project X Cloud, next-gen hardware, and the recent signing of the biggest streamer on the planet doesn't prove to the naysayers that Microsoft is in it for the long run, well, shit, I don't know what else I could say. But I am <laughs> going to tell you this. When Satya Nadala sat down in this interview and said hardware was not only important to the brand, but important to him, and something that they were never they were for the for the foreseeable future, not shy away from. What does that tell you, as not only now a gamer, but a content creator who's now involved in the YouTube scene? I got a couple of points on this. This first off, gaming forte. What you said about they've not shown me any reason to bother Scarlet. I've heard some other people say that. In fact, some people are, they think that's like some kind of negative they're throwing out there against Microsoft. Right. Oh. Shouldn't be, but it is for, for some people. Right now, least. you said Microsoft loves you. You're a perfect customer. They don't need you to buy Scarlet. Mm -hmm. You've got an X or an S and you've got a PC. You're going to be buying their games. You're in their ecosystem. When, when someone makes that statement, that's when my, when when Phil and Sadia 
really chuckle. They're like, guy's already a customer, so we're good. Mm -hmm. put, and I already know. And him saying that, you know, that they're, they're really going to support. And we know they're going to put out something great. And it, people like me, I'm going to buy Scarlet Day One regardless. I, I'm yeah. a console guy. I love consoles. I get excited when the new generations. I, I do a podcast with with uh, called Next Gen about the PS5 and, and the next Xbox. It's a great time. But their business model. Here's the thing, and, and Phil said it. If Microsoft is unbelievably successful and starts dominating, me to fail. And no matter right. the fact, Sony sold PlayStation's. Microsoft has made more money off Xbox One than they did off 360. Yeah, it's correct. Cracked. Now a lot of that money is from services, but that's fine. That's part of their business model now. To sell a hundred million. They've already got the 45 million out there. They've got how many ever people on PC. Quite as huge as Game Pass is, but the fact that they're going to be releasing day and date on Steam, I keep telling people, that is so huge. It's it's going to really expand the amount of people playing. Because there's some PC people, they would not go to the Microsoft Store and, and, and get a game. They just didn't want to fool with that. They were, hey, Steam and Steam only. And, and now, going to be in there. And then they're going to eventually, wow, I can just get Game Pass too. And and even though they might not be paying for live, they're going to get a lot of subscriptions that will be for, they're, they're in that ecosystem. And they may be, oh, I'm a PC guy, blah, blah, whatever. But you know what? Yeah, you're also now in the Microsoft ecosystem, and, and they love you. You're a you're a great customer for them, and it, it's. They, they, I, I said before they got their ducks in a row. Yeah, you know, it's really it, nice. not just a, an Xbox person, but but Sadia coming out and saying, because I, I don't know ten years from now what, what it's going to, and to be honest, I don't care. I'm worried about next year. Right, I'm in my fifties. I, I I just I take whatever I can get, <laughs> and on the PlayStation VR because I was like I'm not going to I'm not going to wait I'm too old to wait I got to have this now <laughs> you know, you, yeah. and all that and I hope Microsoft goes that way but this is not part of the topic but it's no I mean listen again everyone's opinion is important and you you made yeah. you, you you just like Forte had a, a lot of great points to uh to end this particular topic um, and uh, listen, the, the, the bottom line is when the head guy sits down in an interview, like, like, and again, you have to understand, Satya Nadal is the head of Microsoft, man. This isn't, you know, this isn't like the janitor talking. This isn't the uh, <laughs> developer what, that they just signed talking. This is the head guy. And he's telling you right out of the gate, very straightforward consoles are not going away for the foreseeable future. Now, I don't I can't I can't attest to how long that's going to be. Is it 10 years? Is it 5 is it 25 right. years? Well, shit, I don't know. All I can tell you is that yeah, you, you have to look at what everyone This this is one of those again, broad stroke, okay? Because Microsoft is in their own lane right now. The same way Nintendo constantly is in their own lane, which I love. I love the way Nintendo does things. They've always danced to their own beat of the drum that they are drumming. Not what someone else is doing. They do what they want to do. And Sony has found their niche. Sony is in their lane and and they're having tremendous success. But Microsoft has has you know there's been some failings up until you know up until 2017 when Phil got promoted and it really has been a tremendous upswing regardless of whether you you like their first party output again some people love Sea of Thieves some people like State of the K two people some people love Crackdown three and it may not be someone else's game but it's 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 a first party game and it and all three has saw some some success now obviously now when you're talking about the caliber of uh, of a game like Gears five that launches in a couple of weeks well that that's a horse of another color and i think we're right. going to get a lot of new sales but i i, but I just kind of want to just bring it back to the hardware thing folks it's you know you, no one's saying that you, you you have to go out and buy a scarlet but if you want the, if you're if you're a tech head like the, most of us in the chat and most of us on yeah. this panel you're going to want to play it and we have some information coming out that 
that I don't have as a story, and I'll mention it because I know, Forte, you had said, you know, right now Microsoft has not given me enough to say I want Scarlet for $500. Well, yep. but, uh, 343 came out and said that uh, the, uh, the Scarlet version of Halo Infinite is going to be the the creme de la creme of the version, the, the 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 Star Citizen version, and obviously, I think once you see that go- running, you you might change your mind. No, and, and you know what? You're absolutely right. And this is the thing for me. If I look like as of right now, if I look at because we have no stakes on what Halo is going to how it's going to run or anything yet. If they come out and say. This is what it's going to look like on Scorpio on uh, the new um, Scarlet. And then we get the PC settings and they show that you need a 2080 Ti and stuff. I'm like, I'm not spending fifteen hundred dollars on a <laughs> on a graphics card to get that. As much as I as much as I have a PC that's good enough to run the game at 4K 60 and get everything that I want right now, probably. I want the best and I'm but I'm not going to overspend to do it. So if it comes down to that then yes, that's why I never painted myself into that corner saying I won't ever get the system. I just think that right now Microsoft is doing what's best for them and people need to do what's best for them when it comes to making decisions on these systems like just because you decide to jump in and play in a different eco I mean a different platform, you're still like like uh, Mojo said, you're still part of the Xbox family. You're still giving Microsoft either fifteen dollars a month or whatever you're giving them just to access the games. And I didn't even think about the one thing you said with it being on Steam. Think about the think about Ninja and <laughs> and that game being launched on Steam day one. Think about what Twitch is going to look like for all of those gamers, all of those streamers that love first person shooters to finally get a chance to play a Halo game. Yeah. Don't you that you talking about Microsoft is going to own streaming. Yes. When that game launches. Yeah. So just think about all of the people that don't have PCs that can run the game, but they want the best experience they can get. That's going to sell systems in itself. And people, when you think about Ninja being acquired and bringing brought over to Xbox for that reason, man, now that I think about it, man, they're going to give people so many reasons to buy this system just because it's going to probably be the best option for you to not have to go out and spend three thousand dollars to actually play the game that you enjoy. Drop five hundred dollars. And you'll get one of the best experience in gaming when it comes to this game because everybody's going to be playing it, it seems, because it's going to be strength everywhere when it comes out that year. Oh, yeah, that, that's a great point. Real quick, before we close out the show, because it's 90-plus minutes, and that's what you get each and every week on the Xbox Factor Podcast, I have to thank Scrub Nurse for the outstanding and extremely generous ten dollar super chat and he says um until government treats internet like a utility the uh these big corporations will not put in the infrastructure to surpass a console that's a great point but i will jump on x cloud as well salute to the older gamers great show thanks so much scrub nurse great to have you in the chat as always and of course the generosity cannot be uh, thanked enough that is very kind of you i'm gonna say this this has been an amazing 90 minute xbox show and i am very very happy to have my co-hosts for today and of course gaming forte and mojo blues but i have to say a big thank you to the 110 people that were watching live at one point That is big numbers for a very small show that hopefully has a big voice, not only on social media, but within the YouTube content creation community. So, of course, let's get some outros here. And, of course, I'm going to start with my very, very good friend, Gaming Forte. Listen, dude, we have become buds. Love what the energy you bring to the show. Love the knowledge that you also bring being someone that is in the know when it comes to sales and games. Love what you do on the Basement Radio Arcade podcast and look forward to what you guys are going to be talking about. I believe this evening, please tell everyone where they can follow you on Twitter, but more importantly, listen to you on your other shows and, of course, subscribe to your channel that did you finally get to that 1250 
Sure did. Nice. Got, to there, got there the other day, man. Okay. So, yeah, thanks for the shout out on that and everything else. But overall, man, really great show. Really appreciate the invite. Whenever Boone, man, I always feel like this. Boone put so much work into this. <laughs> it almost makes me feel, it, it feels criminal to me when this man has to find people to help him do some of the show. <laughs> so, Thanks, if I'm a, so if I'm available, I will always jump on this show to help him because he always helps everybody as much as he can. So we need to do that in favor. But uh, yeah, Basement Radio Podcast is tonight with myself, Slow Mo Backslap, Brap, and um, E and B Money. So that's going to be a really cool thing tonight. We're going to be talking about all of this stuff. I think it's going to get real saucy around a lot of these different topics. Also, you know, Scumcast, scum, my, 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 my first lady, my moms, the Ash and Luca. Um, make sure you give her some love because she's still figuring out this Discord thing. But um, her her test stream went really well. So it looks like we're going to have a really good uh, Scumcast coming up this weekend. And, man, Twitter is always a good place to get a hold of me. And then, like Boone said, thanks for everybody that subscribed for the 1250 subscribers on the gaming forte channel that's where you can catch all of my content where i have a couple of videos coming up talking about the xbox one x um gears 5 system we're gonna be talking about um what phil spencer had to say and sally nadella had to say in a little bit more depth about just systems in general still being a thing in the future so yeah stop by subscribe to the channel and um thanks again for the invite boone as always oh listen great to have you here really truly enjoy working with you guys and in fact fact, everybody on your uh your your show i enjoy working with and mojo blues who saw the smoke screen during the three hour test cast from the other evening uh and when i was looking for a co-host and he raised his hand so high that i could see it miles away so of course if you'd like to be a guest on Breakfast with Boom or some of the other shows that we do, just hit me up in the DM. And as long as you have a proper mic and, you know, you can not curse on the air because I try to run a PG show because mm-hmm. I do have some kids listen to it. You're more than welcome to guest on any of the Double Barrel Gaming shows. Mojo, please, I want you to tell everyone where they can follow you on Twitter. But more importantly... Listen to you on other programs that you happen to be on. Well, first off, uh, I have got a little bit of content on my channel on YouTube now. uh, And I'm setting up a podcast for Sunday nights. Hopefully early in September, I'm going to get it started. Nice. It's kind of weird because in October, I'm going to be in Germany for three weeks. But I'm hoping I would only miss maybe one episode because of travel, because I'm probably going to fly out on a Saturday and the show's going to be Sunday night. So I doubt I'd I'd have to miss one, but I think I still want to get it up and going. And it's going to be a week in review and week upcoming top show, kind of the week that was the week that will be based on what games are out right now and what everyone's playing. It's going to be really gaming focused, even though it's, it's actually going to be called uh, BDXP best damn Xbox podcast. Nice. Uh, Very good. Great great show day just about to say that that even though I, I don't mind cursing here and there but on a show like this I just I don't I was an air traffic controller and I have really good uh, air discipline I appreciate but, it very much thank you uh, I'm on Mads Gaming's uh, next gen podcast we were going to go right after this show but he's got some travel going on and he's make, doing plans right now so we're going we're gonna to skip this week so we'll be back on uh next wednesday at uh, 2 p.m or yeah so but on my own channel i'm gonna have a bunch of content dropping this weekend i've picked up a new camera and all kinds of little attachments and accessories a, a, a small show that you know more like a video you know run from anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes called uh mojo's milkshake and movies okay <laughs> I'm gonna, i've got i've got like a 1950s milkshake maker from a diner Nice. And I'm Very nice. Doing all these different recipes, and while I'm making them and talking about it, I'm going to be uh, talking about either classic movies out on on disc or whatever's the the latest greatest release from that week. But it's hopefully it's something niche, but it'll it'll I hope it'll be interesting. And of course, on Twitter, I'm always on there because I, I pull those twelve hour shifts overnight at work, and I'm telling on myself. I hope no one's yeah, above me's not not hearing that. But yeah, I play on Twitter all night. And I do my my thing now on Twitter. I've got the laser disc pick of the day, and 
and it's not about the dead format of Laserdisc. It's about to show people different kinds of movies that can be found on any format or streaming services. And it's, hey, this is a great movie. You should check it out. Keep keep on that. And uh, I, the few people that actually see it on Twitter seem to like it. And so I'm going to keep going strong with that. But that's kind of my three things going, the, the, the podcast with Mads. Uh, my own channel is going to have you know a little bit of content with videos for game reviews, movie reviews, and then I'm going to do the uh, BDXP on Sunday nights. I've already got uh, and still looking for other people. So anybody wants to DM me on Twitter that, that maybe it's not been on podcast before that want to, you know, I'm looking. I want both, like some new blood as mm-hmm. well as some folks that have you know that have been used to this. Um, I've only pushed maybe back to September because I'm still trying to wrap my head around Discord. And uh, I think I've got OBS down a little bit, but the Discord, I still. But the Graphic God, you know, Jay, wow, great Gentlemen, guy. Gentlemen, yeah, he, he definitely oh, schooled me. That guy that guy is the hero of the industry. A lot of people don't give him enough credit. But listen, dude, I'm, I'm going to say this. It was great, fantastic to have you on. You know, listen, just take baby steps. Remember, I, I, I jumped into this coming from a career that had nothing to do with gaming. Uh, it was actually the opposite of gaming, 100%. And I, I jumped into the wind heels first. And you know what? Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it worked out. I'm very happy about that. But, you know, I, I, I just want to say a final thought. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, I'm never going to tell anyone not to go listen to somebody. I, I will not do that. I say that as a gamer... Uh, you have a choice of who you want to listen to, and if that said person is not giving you the content that you like or that you or that you want to listen to anymore, you don't owe anybody anything, so you can always just unsubscribe or you can just not listen to them, especially if you get annoyed by what you're listening to. When you're looking at your watch, then you know something is wrong because you should be – the time should be passing, and you'd be like, wow, the show was over that quick? That's yep. what I get from these shows, and I hope that everyone is enjoying, you know, the, 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 the new direction of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the show where we're getting lots of live content, but I'm also doing some videos, throwing it in there, and some opinion stuff as well. And, of course, if you didn't listen to it, I covered on Monday the mass shootings that recently happened. Yes, it was a, a bit of a somber show, but it was packed with lots of information about about gun violence and what we can do to try and fix it so if you missed that uh go to, go to my channel and check that out but i want to wish everyone a great day enjoy that it's hump day and hump that, day. Yeah, and then the weekend will be here soon enough of course i want to thank the chat for once again being the best chat on youtube thank you so much for how awesome you guys are and of course again thanks to my amazing panel appreciate all the amazing and very smart opinions i want to wish everyone a great day and i want to finish off the show with this please it doesn't cost anything to be nice and it also i just want to to close with this one it uh, treat people how you want to be treated and you're going to have a good day i guarantee it Take care, everyone. I'll see everyone tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow because tomorrow's Thursday. Friday morning on the newest episode of Breakfast with Boom. Have a great day.